Howdy folks, Brian Cusco here at Triple B. You guys want to see a big snake? <laughs> well, you're in luck because you're going to see a big snake. Well, you're going to see a few snakes, but one of them is really big. Today we're visiting my buddy Jeff Kelly at El Segundo Pythons and talking to him about how he got into keeping these massive pythons. You're watching Triple B TV. Uh, when I was real young, I got a ball python from a local pet shop. And, like six, seven years old? Or? Uh, I think it was about eight, nine eight? years old. That's young. And then one day I came home, my dad just gave it away. So when I was in like middle school, I decided I was going to get another one. I ended up with a red tail. I didn't tell my mom how big the thing would get. I was still living at home. I told my dad and he he freaked out, but he's like, just don't tell mom. So <laughs> I never told her. Cool dad. <laughs> but it ended up being a male and it stayed small anyway. So that snake I had for eight years or so. One day I decided I wanted retics. So I got a retic from a local pet shop and it never really stopped. So how old were you when you got your first retic? That was about eight years ago. So you're, you're a fairly young guy, I mean, yeah. to com uh, compared to most other people out there that are keeping retics on any kind of level. Because, I mean, El Segundo Pythons, <clears throat> I think that most people who keep retics know El Segundo Pythons. Why is El Segundo Python such a well-known name among retic keepers? Um, I think it's mainly because I focused on just retics in the beginning, and that's, well, retics and berms. I did a lot of berms, and then I've always kept the same logo, and it's always been that. Okay. And I think just over the years, it's it's just became recognizable when you when you go on the internet. And so you stayed straight. So you stayed stable with it. You're all, yeah. You stayed consistent. Yeah. Is what you did. Okay. That makes sense. And then you have a little bit. You have an outreach there in the internet and the, with the YouTube channel. And yeah. I just assumed this was your full time gig. You know, I assumed you're doing <laughs> no. it just because of how much your name was out there, kind yeah. of thing. You know. No, I've I've never really done it for the money. It's it's always been more of a passion than anything. And. I mean, most people that, that breed snakes will tell you that you can't make a decent living off it, especially living in L.A. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. This is probably one of the more expensive places in the world to be, yeah. for sure. How long ago did you produce your first clutch of reticulated pythons? Uh, my first retic clutch was about six years ago. Six years ago? Okay. Yeah. And did you have some help with Tim and Jay getting feet on the ground a little bit with that? or? Yeah, I, I had Tim and Jay helping me with my initial questions. Yeah, well, they, they've got enough experience. I'm yeah. sure they have some good answers. I know I'm, I'm trying to breed some retakes at some point, too. I'll definitely be looking to them for yeah. some, some answers on some of my questions, that's for sure. Can we take a look at a few cool babies that you got here sure. that you produce? I'll grab some. So what do you have here? This is a lavender marble. The marble is a fairly new gene, I guess. It's actually, it's been around for a while, but just recently, a lot has been done with it. They vary a lot, which is one reason why I really like them. When I initially did the breeding with a... A normal marble to a purple I wasn't really fond of it just because the snake looked like a it looked like a locality to me it just it didn't do much but once I hatched that clutch it kind of sparked my interest in it again because it it did vary a lot I mean no no two look the same I mean you can see this one's got full striping I mean all the way down it the craziness on the dorsal is all, like how it's all broken up like that is that kind of what's consistent with marble is they kind of look like some of the real extreme granite backs in a way where they just get a real broken pattern of course albino cleans it up a little bit but the broken up pattern then they'll get a lot of like silver and like blushings in the in the pattern and stuff which is pretty cool that's pretty badass now i see pictures of these things posted online and i'm just like damn dude <laughs> <laughs> it must have been exciting to see that thing crawl out of the egg yeah it definitely was actually the first clutch of of marbles i made well albino marbles was the marble het purple to a lavender motley and I started cutting eggs and I I had no idea what was in there <laughs> because I, I cut one and it was an albino and I cut another one and it was kind of on its side and I thought it was a phantom just because it was just the end of its tail and I didn't really think much of it I was like I don't remember putting a, a phantom in there it wasn't until like the seven or eighth egg where I cut one and the snake was completely right side up and it was a clear as day of marble I was like oh now it makes sense because then I realized the other ones I was looking at were motley marbles. That's a good looking snake, man. Thank you. This is a Sunfire Golden Child Genetic Stripe Het Rennet Ghost. Het Rennet Ghost. 
Yep. So it was a Rennet Ghost Het Genetic Stripe to a Sunfire Golden Child Het Genetic Stripe. Wow. Although it doesn't look like much, it's kind of just a, a brown snake with a little bit of pattern. The, the iridescence is crazy. Maybe it's just these lights right now, but the iridescence is yeah. ridiculous. The fact that it's Het Rennet Ghost, yeah. that's where the. <laughs> <laughs> that's going to be something. It's crazy. If you had to like, pick one snake, that, if your favorite snake that you've ever produced that you ever saw come out of an egg, what would it be? Um, can you pick one? Can you pick just one? That's tough. That's tough, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'd probably have to say the purple motley marble. Purple, purple motley marble? Yeah. Well, you can't find that one right now? Or? I did. It just wants to piss and shit everywhere. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> and he's not real happy. She just fought with him. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Fair enough. Maybe we can go in there with the vlog camera a little bit later and you look on the vlog later, you'll be able to see this snake that Jeff's like, the, his favorite one he's ever produced. Sorry about that little dude. <laughs> <laughs> so make sure you check out the vlog if you want to see the snake because I'm going to go in there with the vlog camera after this and we'll take a quick look at it. Yeah, I'd say we look at one more baby and then okay. just pull out some big girls. What's the story behind this snake? This snake actually came out of one of those real nasty looking sucked up eggs. And I mean, this snake was tiny. It was... I don't know, it looked like a, a true super dwarf. It was, it was that small. I really didn't think it was gonna make it and the snake was just solid black. It wasn't until two months and like a couple meals that I realized that it was actually a sunfire. It was just so dark. But I mean, you can see the, the pattern on it. It's real clean. Yeah. And then mainly in the tail, you can see sunfire usually erases the pattern stuff yeah, past the Yeah, the, the vent. striping coming all the way down too is just, I mean, yeah. solid and clean. So it's a sunfire tiger golden child. Right. Pet albino. It's a good looking snake, man. Yeah. Now, you guys know we're not going to come all the way down to El Segundo pythons and not pull out some big, big reticulated pythons. So we said we pull out a couple big girls. Sure. Yes. All right. So, what, so purple golden child sunfire. What's going on here? This is a lavender sunfire golden child. Lavender that I sunfire golden child. About three years ago. Any anything that's uh, sun golden, you know, whether it's white, lavender, purple. I mean, they all they all really do it from what I see. I don't know if you knew that or not, but you picked a good snake to pull out. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. What do you guys think about this snake, man? Leave a comment down below if you would get one of these snakes from Jeff right here. I know I would. You want to pull out a big one? Yeah. Let's, we're gonna, <laughs> I mean, this is a good sized snake right here. We're going to pull out, we're gonna pull out a, real, a real big one. <laughs> Why, you think she'll take my face? No, she won't. She's not that bad. <laughs> oh my gosh. What do you guys think? Okay, is that a big enough snake for you guys? <laughs> what, look at the size of the head on this thing, guys. Oh my gosh. That is a big snake right there. What do you think this snake weighs? Uh, last time I weighed her, she was about 160 pounds. Oh, is that it? <laughs> <laughs> now you're making me feel weak. <laughs> See if we can get up now. <laughs> okay, I'm up. I could probably stand to do a couple more <laughs> squats. Yeah, that's a, that's a decent sized snake right there, man. <laughs> Should definitely make me uh, feel like I uh, need to hit the gym. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that thing is massive. I don't have any snakes this big yet. <coughs> yet. <laughs> yeah, yet, yet is definitely the key word in that sentence. So how do you keep a bunch of snakes like this and have a full-time job? Uh, weekends. Weekends, <laughs> holidays, after work. Yep, every wow. day after work and basically seven days a week. It doesn't really end. Now, the amount of power, so this is what you gotta think about. If you're thinking about getting a reticulated python, you gotta think about this, because this is a lot of animal to work with. I mean, I couldn't take this thing out by myself and. I mean, maybe I could, but... Probably not the safest. Probably not the safest thing to do. It's the amount of power you can feel in this girl is just... Let's put her back. Yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna put her back. <laughs> <laughs> it's best if you let them do the work. Right. Now she can go back to her safe, sp safe place. Whoop. All right, guys, that was a workout, and that was a lot of fun, too. Uh, Jeff, thank you for allowing us to come into your place, Thanks man. I really appreciate it, dude. Thank you. Awesome.
Alrighty guys, what did you think about that? Make sure to leave us a comment down below and let us know what you thought about this episode. Your feedback and criticisms help us make this the best channel it can possibly be. If you liked it, make sure to subscribe and turn on the notifications so you can see more episodes just like it every Monday. A big thank you to Jeff for having us over, also to his girlfriend Tori for helping be our stand-in camera person. If you want to find out how you can get involved with the channel, well, there are a plethora of links down in the description that I would invite you to check out. Next week, we're going to be talking with Rami, the man who puts on one of the largest reptile expos in the world. And until then, you've been watching Triple B TV. Y'all take care. Oh my gosh, what I love to do. Oh my gosh, smell a stinky poo. Oh my gosh, what I love to say. Little tiny scream mittens every day. What does that do? I said we pull out the blonde. All right. <laughs> I mean, it's gonna be interesting, but. <laughs> hey, if I get bit, I get bit, and I get bit. That's, uh, that's the way the cookie crumbles sometimes. <laughs> and the shit. I lost my train of thought. It's all good. <laughs> um, well, so you, so when, how, how long ago did you, for, sorry, I'm gonna make sure you get back on your little mark there. So quiet in here. You can literally hear the crickets. <laughs> Classic. I'll look at it when Jeff comes back out here before you pull. Oh, never mind. <laughs> Dick, just bring it up. <laughs> A little late. Yep, you're good. Make sure you tell this whole story. I don't know the whole story. It's like it's going fast and it's still, huh? <laughs> Racing stripes. <laughs> So you want me to get like, up close and personal? Up close with personal with the snake, okay. exactly. So can you try and keep it still, please? Because that'd be great. <laughs> <laughs> Enough from the peanut gallery. <laughs> oh, man. I done messed it up. You're watching Triple B TV. Okay, you're watching Triple B TV. <laughs>